morning guys it's Wednesday guess what we're doing yep we uh, we got a little dusting of snow yesterday afternoon and uh, wasn't supposed to snow anymore looked out a couple times during the night and we must have got a burst uh, real early this morning I got up about 5:30, and there was four inches of snow on the ground went to bed with a barely enough to coat the ground so everybody around town here is scrambling to get their snow plowing route done myself included way behind I'm like four hours behind it's only supposed to get to 30 today so and it's gonna be real cold tonight so it's got to go I really thought we were done with this. I thought maybe we'd get a couple of wet slushy accumulations, which is what this was supposed to be, half an inch. And of course, something fired up last night and uh, came and stuck us you know where. Which is fine, I don't mind doing a couple uh, extra pushes for March, but I really need to put this truck down and uh, start repairing the fuel tank in it. And I was going to swap over to the Duramax the other day, but the rest of the week looked beautiful, so I figured out ah, what the hell. I'll just leave the spreader on this truck and we'll be alright. Well, you see where we're at today. Murphy's Law strikes again. So this is my, uh, after I get this little section done here, this is my speed plowing video. Because I've been hauling ass. I've already made up probably 45 minutes this morning, maybe an hour. And it's only uh, 10 till 8. The snow's not too, too heavy. It's actually, it was uh, like 10 degrees last night. Just got to watch out because this ground is not frozen anymore. On top, it's frozen down low. We got about three foot of frost, but you can still leave a wheel rut. I just was not anticipating four inches of snow last night. Sorry for the earthquake cam there, fellas. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who uh, gave me uh, responses on my uh, Honda dirt bike issues. Um, I did a bunch of tests yesterday, and uh, everything so far checks out within spec. Um, I'm not getting the high voltage readings off of the coil in the uh, stator and the pickup coil. I think they want 100 volts off the uh, stator and they want 100 volts at the coil. And I'm not getting either one, but I don't have the specialized tools to check them. So the crazy thing is, and I've been talking with some guys about it, um, one in particular. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate all your help. Um, it's such an intermittent problem or a, uh, a, a dynamic problem, meaning it's a running issue. It's not a, necessarily completely a starting issue. Um, that uh, this might be time to play parts changer. And I hate to say that. I really uh, am not interested in being a parts changer, but at any rate, it's going to get done. Today we're going to uh, swap out a stator with another one that I have because that's the easy thing to swap at this point. It's actually part of the side cover and I have a whole complete engine uh, that I can rob parts off of that had a uh, blown valve train and uh, piston. So I assume that was good running right up to the point where it grenaded. And this bike was too. It was it ran beautiful 
up until the point that it uh, shit the cam out of it. And after changing that, um, putting it back together, it ran fine for a while, and then it developed this high-speed bog, or mid-range bog. And uh, I would, I just had it in my mind that it was fuel, but everybody has been telling me it's electrical, which is fine because I'm not a dirt bike mechanic by any stretch of the imagination, nor am I a, a mechanic really of any sort, so I don't have a lot of bench time troubleshooting stuff like that. So that's why I've consulted my folks in the YouTube garage. have way more experience than I do. I can tell you how to plant a tree or install a yard or construct a sprinkler system or retaining wall, but what I can't do with any degree of certainty is tell you how to troubleshoot electrical on an engine. What's strange, and I've noticed this before, I've seen on uh, like small equipment engines, if there's an intermittent electrical fault, I have seen times where uh, my guys had been running something and they say, well, it runs good if you pull the choke up a little bit. And uh, almost every time that that fault has happened, it's been a faulty electric PTO switch or a key switch or something like that. Which makes no sense to me why adding choke makes it run better, but it has in the past. So uh, I guess I should have thought of all that before I started uh, tearing into this bike. Adding choke did not fix the high speed miss, but uh, enriching the pilot circuit on that carburetor uh, made it run tons better. That's why I was thinking, you know, that aftermarket exhaust was the culprit, but I actually swapped the factory XR250 exhaust back onto the bike last night and it did the same thing. So, today is probably gonna be change the stator day, and if that doesn't fix it, then we're gonna put the old bike on its side and pull the right side cover off where your right foot goes and the clutch and all that is because it's wet it's got oil in it the other side should be dry unless you have a crank seal leaking which I wouldn't rule it out but we're going to uh, swap that side cover because the stator is screwed right into it and that should be non-barring any uh, fastener issues and removal that should be a down and dirty project probably an hour at best. So we're going to do that after I get done with this plowing route, which is probably going to be 10.30 or 11 o'clock this morning, unfortunately. I just would have never guessed we were going to get four inches of snow last night. That was sort of a kick in the nutsack. And of course, it's getting towards springtime, so people aren't being as careful with where they leave their vehicles. And it's making this whole effort a whole lot more difficult than it should be. There's a Suburban, one of the green Suburbans sitting under the uh, overhang here. Which really isn't causing me too much grief. I've already gotten the, uh, the ramp cleared out. I'm going to back into here no matter what, so that didn't really screw me, but two of the other places I did this morning had a bunch of cars in them, which sucked. And of course I didn't have my uh, flashing beacon on the roof first thing this morning, and I went to put it on and the roof of the truck was covered with ice except for like one tiny little spot, so that was always fun. Should have known something was up this morning with the weather because I woke up with a terrible headache. Usually my brain tells me when it's going to be uh, real crappy out or some big system has passed because I 
usually end up with a uh, near migraine type headache in the morning. Took some Excedrin, so now I'm talking 200 miles an hour. Haven't had any coffee either. But the good news is I've avoided 90% of the traffic that I thought I was going to hit. Usually by 6 o'clock or 5.30 in the morning, the traffic is atrocious. But for whatever reason this morning, I mean, even the roads uh, weren't clear. They brined them two days ago and sprayed them with magnesium chloride because a week ago we had an afternoon wet snow and the roads weren't treated and it was a catastrophe. There was car accidents everywhere. Of course, everybody's got spring fever, so they're not uh, thinking about being as cautious driving. We still got you know, probably, for the most part, where I had my big snow piles, we still have about a two foot uh, snow pile laying in the yard that's. 15 feet deep, or wide, I should say. I guess we don't have to worry about speed plowing this. We'll pick up the pace a little, but the sun's up and it's in my face when I back up, so hard to see if there's a car coming. Usually what happens when people are late to work, you guys know the drill. Nobody's paying attention to what the hell's going on. And I'm out here trying to do my job. Talking to a camera, which happens to be my job at the moment. Nice thing is uh, here at the funeral home when people start coming to work, they'll park out of my way. This uh, account here I've been doing for, oh, uh, this is the 20th season. And uh, my uh, business partner is their son, grandson, family owned business type deal. So they've been around us and we've been around them since we were uh, minnows, so to speak. So in 20 years, uh, I think we've uh, all come to an understanding of what it takes to get the work done. And it's a good business relationship. I'm very thankful for it. There's a lot of... Uh, people who never established that with a customer. And I think I've said it before, I don't do a lot of accounts, but all everyone that I do uh, appreciates the service that we provide. And it's hard to get a group of people like that. Somebody uh, mentioned with the camera in the window that they had to listen to the squeaky, squeaky wipers, so we're not going to run the wipers today. I hate these wipers anyway. They're AutoZone brand uh, Bosch Icon knockoffs, or Rain-X, you know, extreme knockoffs, whatever your uh, flavor is. Those wipers are awesome. These are absolute pieces of shit. They don't clear the window right. Thought about hitting them with a little uh, alcohol wipe and see if that straightens them out a little bit, but they've been uh, nothing but problems for me since I put them on here. The icons I had on before, I don't know why I took them off. They were still clear in the window. I figured they were two years old. Most people change your wipers every six months, or you're supposed to. For optimum performance, I 
thought I was being foolish yesterday. I was playing the odds that I wasn't going to have to buy any more salt this year, and I ended up about 3.30 yesterday. The snow was supposed to be here by 10 yesterday morning, and it never came. By 3.30, it started snowing like crazy, and I thought, well, I better go get my salt. And then it stopped snowing, so I felt, well, that was a waste. But, as we see today, it was not a waste. An aggravation, but not a waste. here and this side is pretty much wiped down. It's really slippery too. There's quite a bit of ice underneath this from the little bit of snow that came during the afternoon and it got driven over. still right on the edge of the asphalt and I didn't want to start peeling up any grass although I'm going to have some yard repairs to do here in the springtime things that have been missed over the years trees that have been removed and the uh, the root base area has decomposed and I've got potholes and everything else One more little pushy here. except for shoveling off the four sidewalks over in front of the office buildings. And my two little baby sidewalks over here. And we just have the back driveway and the employee parking lot. They might not have the salt too, too heavy today either. Looks like uh, what residual salt I had since it hasn't rained is still laying on the parking lot. And now that the sun's shining pretty good, it's sort of cutting it right off. Oh, I don't like surprise snowstorms. 
normally I'm very prepared for this kind of thing, but you always get that one or two that just sneak up on you when they say you're only supposed to get a tiny bit. I didn't even have a plow on this morning. I've been driving with the plow off of this truck because I got tired of dragging it around and trying to find parking places and everything else. to get a few phone calls for uh, maintenance and landscaping type work though so that's kind of cool tells me people are uh, coming out of their winter hibernation something else that totally threw me off today check this out not that it's anything exciting see all the flower pots mmm isn't that awesome not that I would normally push snow there but it's one more obstacle to try not to hit it's crazy this one's such in a back driveway it almost doesn't have any snow on it must have been a serious accumulation of salt on it or something It's five after eight. I should start to see uh, at least the secretary show up here. She usually gets here about eight, between eight and eight thirty. Either that, or she snuck in behind me and parked under the overhang, which is cool. I like that. Makes my job a little easier. surprised this snow pile is as small as it is that thing was a monster pushing snow back in that corner all winter when it's a late morning snow like this the first things I plow are the places where people congregate in the park I save the uh, ooh, I got some ice here I save the uh, main drags and uh, customer parking for later because if I'm going to fight cars I'm going to have to fight them anyway but at least I can minimize it some by having the employee areas plowed too cold, but 
if it were 25 or 30, I'd be able to get rid of it quick. Looks good there. Let's go for this side and get that cleaned out. So, got the rest of these spots cleared out. Oh, there's a couple more flower pots. I don't know how much you guys can actually see. It seems like that camera is sliding down. up under it here. Oh, that's just going to make it rock and roll. We don't need that. Let's try that. That seems a little more better, huh? start to come up if you have a rough asphalt parking lot or concrete sometimes uh, you'll start to catch those edges because the frost is uh, thawed and refrozen and heat that up and now it's soft a lot of guys have asked the question also uh, about uh, tearing up grass and stuff like that really when we're done at the end of the season 90% of the damage to the grass is from people that drove off the parking lot or delivery trucks and things like that um, or from just general debris melting out of the snow you know if there's going to be trash in the parking lot or you know little bits of asphalt or gravel and that's the majority of the mess that we have to deal with I'll stop like right now I watched the, the plow just right over the edge of the parking lot because the grass is about three inches lower and that's when I stopped I just go real easy so that all that you're doing is touching the edge of that grass ground I have to repair the better for all the time you might save plowing snow you don't gain anything if you have to go back and fix it all I also have the plow angled when I'm coming up to the edge of the parking lot there probably notice that I'm not coming at it squarely. I feel the old ABS kicking. salt yesterday they're starting to produce bagged salt again but all I was able to get my hands on was 50 pounders I normally use 80 pounders because I get tired of all the trash and it loads the spreader a lot faster okay so I forgot that when this camera is recording in mp4 mode that it turns off after 30 minutes or 40 minutes or something like that which is annoying because the card is not full. I don't know why 
I, there's no way to turn that off that I can see. Doug, if you're watching, tell me how that works. If you know. Awesome. Is it trash day today? I don't think so. Unless they came early, early. The trash cans everywhere. <laughs> Sorry for the blinding sun, even I'm getting blinded. Holy cow. But we are facing east. Also, when there's a lot of traffic on the roads, I drag the entrances in so that I have room to get behind it and push it. Especially this driveway because it's got the walls on either side and you've got a blind spot back and down. seen all the bumper repairs that I do on these cars from the funeral home and uh, rear quarter this is why you're staring at it that wall there's not a whole lot of room to pull out of this garage and it gets cut too tight either backing in or pulling out they always back the vehicles in and things like the hearse and the limousine are so long and they've got terrible blind spots backing them up if you're not super, super careful. Let's see if I can shove that trash can up toward the building a little bit. If you're not super careful with them, you hit the wall with them. Usually they just rub them, but that wall is, uh, it's a block wall that's stuccoed. And the stucco is just like a bear claw down the side of a car. That Chrysler uh, minivan that I did... Uh, where I had to do the rear quarter, my uh, like hour and a half marathon, get your popcorn and beer video. Um, this wall pulling out of here is the one that got it. And half the time they don't even know they rubbed it because it's so far back on the vehicle you can't hear it. And it doesn't take much to scrape it up. So they'll pull out and not even know they hit it. And then when it comes time to uh, fess up to who did it they don't know because they couldn't feel it or hear it at least that's the benefit of the doubt I'm giving them of an old snow pile that didn't melt. Thank you. 
amazed at how crappy the roads were this morning too. They were wet at 7 o'clock last night or 8 o'clock last night. I figured I'd get out and wouldn't even have to salt, it'd be melted off. Sorry, not the case. guys hope you enjoyed my little narrative there if you didn't sorry about that it's long but you kept me company this morning and I appreciate it so we'll catch you guys later on <laughs>